everybody. Good evening from Dhaka. I'm Zeenat Islam, Relations Manager, Academia Network at UNIS Center. Welcome to our 32nd YSBC Web Lecture Series. The topic for today's conversation is Social Business for, for Peace Building in Colombia. And today we have with us our speaker, Professor Maria Isabel, Director, Management of in Social Innovation, Universidad Isesi, Colombia. Our moderator today is Mr. Didier Shabu, Director, Uno Social Business Center at Chair Entrepreneurship Territory and Innovation, IAE Paris Sorbonne Business School, France. Some background information about our speaker. Professor Maria is a social enterprise and social innovation advisor, trainer, developer, and educator, trained as an economist and as anthropologist with a PhD in processes of social innovation from Middlesex University, London. She has worked as a freelance consultant and researcher for various organizations in 2007, joined uh, academia as the director of the Masters in Social Entrepreneurship at Goldsmith University uh, of London. Upon her return to her native Colombia in 2014, she set up the master's degree in social innovation management at ISESI in Cali, Colombia. And it is there she continues to support and work directly with various community initiatives to the UNOS Center for Social Innovation. About our moderator, Professor Shabu is a professor of entrepreneurship and strategic management at IAE Paris Sorbonne Business School, University of Paris, Pantheon Sorbonne, France. And he's also the director of the chair ETI and honorary president of the French Academy of Entrepreneurship and Innovation. His research focuses on the process of entrepreneurship, family businesses, and social business and entrepreneurship, and he has published more than 100 articles, chapters, and books. So we have great, a great moderator and a great speaker today, and I'm really excited to hear Maria's story. So with that, we welcome Professor Yunus for his opening words and kick off today's session. Professor Yunus, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Zina. What a pleasure for me to invite two of my great friends today for this conversation and a very challenging topic for the conversation, social business in peace building in Colombia. It's a, it's a subject is so overwhelming. And then when you look at social business, you wonder, uh, is it worth uh, even talking about it? It, it? It's something as powerful as to even talk about the peace building. It's such a horrible thing that we have. Uh, we keep on disturbing peace, destroying peace. Now we have to bring social business into the picture. So the most uh, challenging task that uh, has been taken over by uh, Maria Isabel uh, from University of SSE, Cali, Colombia. Uh, that's why it is focused in Colombia. And uh, the, she uh, attacks a problem which Colombia has been struggling for years. Now she wants to bring a new dimension to it, how she focuses it, how she organizes it. That's something uh, we're very, here to, very uh, eager to hear what it is. And when we talk about social business, b social business is, is a business. The question it raises whether business should be for people or people should be for business. That's a critical issue. Today we are making uh, as if uh, uh, it's, it's a people for the business. So we dedicate ourselves for the business as if business is something to be uh, uh, worshipped. Uh, so we are turning it around. We said that peop is a business for the people. So the objective is the people. So when you are dealing with people, peace comes into it because that's what destroys people's life. So that's how Maria Isabel got into it and in a very exciting way. And uh, we'll be hearing, listening to her, what the, she's been doing. And we got a wonderful moderator today, uh, Didia Shabu. Professor is he's the uh, director of UNO Social Business Center, and uh, you have already heard about his credential. I don't want to repeat it. He's a very powerful person to kind of uh, discuss this issue with uh, Maria. How she is addressing this as a, such a difficult issue to bringing business to hit that we are talking about many other things. We have heard it, but we never heard business, social business. That's a business that we are talking about business for people, how can get to the root of the uh, peace building and build it up piece by piece uh, and make it happen. So, and with interesting discussion because I'm here in Bangladesh uh, and uh, uh, Didier Shabu is in Paris, in Sorbonne. 
and Maria Isabel in Colombia, Cali, Colombia. So it's a triangular kind of thing. We, we covered the whole world in this discussion. So welcome to this discussion. We are eagerly waiting to hear your discussion. Thank you. Floor is yours, Didier. Please start. Thanks a lot, uh, Professor Yunus. It's, uh, it's great to, to be with you and thank, thanks a lot for, for your kind invitation because you are really inspiring us, as you know, and it's uh, it's great to be with you and and this uh, in this seminar and uh, and clearly, as you point, I'm very happy to to be with Maria Isabel uh, from ECC University in Cali because uh, uh, our topic is, is is clearly very very important because uh, uh, saying that uh, what about we know that social business is uh, helping to change the world. Uh, thanks to the action it promotes, and it's it, it's great to do that. And uh, here in Colombia, she she opens a way to discuss in what way social business can be also useful for for peace building. And uh, it's probably a very very important issue because we we realize that promoting the, the free zero world, uh, saying we have to fight with uh, pollution, with poverty, and with unemployment, we we also help to to make a peaceful society uh, and it's perhaps uh, so the, the aim of this session will be really to see what is going on in Colombia what is she doing in what way she is helping to to fight uh, in favor of peace and uh, and in what way finally the, the UNUS having a UNUS uh, social business center is really a very good idea in Colombia in order to help for these initiatives, because just I will let the thought work, but um, the point is this one. When we think about Cali and about Colombia, we clearly have a, a mixed image, a mixed picture, because we, we know that Cali, for instance, is considered to be amongst the, the 30 uh, the 30 worst cities in the world regarding the number of murders and regarding the violence. Uh, and so she's really at the center of a big issue because we, Colombia is improving and Cali, if I understand well, Cali is uh, very well known due to drug gangs. And, uh, and there is a lot of stuff to do because there is a lot of poverty. There is an important poverty gap inequalities in the city and also uh, an important amount of homicide. And, and so we really think that poverty is probably an important element in these dynamics. And so helping to develop the city and to develop really good dynamics is, is probably at the center. So uh, perhaps to, to, to start with, I think Maria Isabel, it, it would be great because uh, as Zinat was saying, you, you are you have been involved for a very long time in social innovation. Uh, you were anthropologist, you were economist, and you have made really social action in your country. And you went to the UK to make a PhD. You went back, you came back to, to Colombia. Uh, and so it would be great to have your, yes, your vision of that, saying, okay, in what way UNUS, having a UNUS center is really crucial to, to help to building a better society and to develop a, a good dynamics locally. Oh, your, your uh, microphone is... Uh... Good, good morning, Professor Didier. Good morning, Professor Junus. And hello, everyone that is here with us this morning. Thank you very much, Professor Didier, for leading this conversation. As, as you mentioned over the years, I have worked in different community settings and with different processes and figures as well. I have worked in international development, I have worked in corporate social responsibility programs. I have worked advising social entrepreneurs in different parts of the world. And now, to be honest with you, 20 years later of starting to work in grassroots organizations, um, I have lost a lot of hopes in this world, but social business keeps providing a light I don't see many more solutions to this world where we are than social business. I don't see a lot of optimism around here in a city and in a country that has given its back to a peace process. And sometimes when I have difficulty 
believing and persuading other people. And sometimes when I lack energy, immediately I go back to that concept of social business that has offered us a vision of a world of three zeros, a world that our, where our grandchildren can exist, a world like the one that John Lennon imagined, a world where we all live for each other. And you know, you, you need, you need that illusion, you need that hope and that utopia to work, to walk towards the future. Because otherwise the reality here is very pressing and very appalling. And it is quite difficult to just lose any sort of hope. And social business at the end of this career for me is my best vehicle to try and share that hope that we need to keep on walking as a society, as a city, and as a country. And perhaps, so clearly, it's providing light and hope and saying that we, we must act to, to, to help to change the world with, with an important philosophy, like Professor Yunus was saying, remembering, saying that the human being is at the center of all the economic dynamics. Uh, and, and so perhaps just to, to start with saying, okay, uh, with this idea, because I think your, your Yunus Center for Social Innovation has been the first in, in Colombia and among the, 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 the first also in, in South America. So how, how, how did you go in, the, in this dynamic and why, Finley? Because why, I understand, because to help acting and so on, but how, how did you arrive to that? Um, yes, the, the Juno Center here for Social Innovation at the Universidad Isesi was the first Juno Center of its kind in Colombia, not for very long, thankfully, because as you know, Professor Juno's idea is to take this initiative of Juno Center to every university in the world. So we are not very successful if we continue to be the first and the only Juno Center in Colombia. That, is, that didn't last for very long. I think I was the only Juno Center like for two or three months. I have now colleagues in Bogota, in another university, leading a Juno Center. We have colleagues in the Caribbean coast as well, thinking and doing all the necessary steps and the due diligence to open a Juno Center. And this is a good message that I would like to share with the audience here. If you are listening, from different universities in different parts of the world, whether it is in Europe, in North America, in South America, or in Asia, there is always an option to set up a Juno Center at your university. What we need to do is to make sure that the concept of social business and that the practice of social business is taught in economics programs, in business administration programs, in MBAs around the world. So if any of you who's listening here as part of this audience is thinking, how can I bring this to my university? There is always a hope. You just need to take note of the people here of Sinat Islam. You need to go to the website of the Juno Center organization in Bangladesh because Professor Junus has inspired many of us around the world, and there are many, many different organizations with his name and following his agendas as well. But the Junus Center in Bangladesh is the organization that goes around the world setting up social businesses. In Cali, we have had for six years approximately a master's degree in social innovation that is set up around different topics, for example, social entrepreneurship. And within that big concept and movement of social entrepreneurship, we make an effort to teach what is social business and how is it different from regular social enterprises. That is one theme. We also focus on international development and humanitarian aid between countries, because we know that well-managed and well-financed, that can also be a very powerful force for social transformation. We also talk about corporate social responsibility or 
creating shared value of however you want to call it that there are so many titles and names but interestingly social business can also play a very important role in helping traditional businesses and companies establish clear assertive and effective corporate social responsibility programs or agendas social business provides an excellent opportunity to do social investment in a particular neighborhood or territory where a company operates. And because the spectrum of corporate social responsibility is so wide and there are so many things that can be classified as corporate social responsibility, some very transformative and some very light as well, I think social business is becoming the new trend within corporate social responsibility programs. If companies were before struggling, trying to see how can we enter this community? How can we affect positively this community? Or how can we mitigate some problems in this area or neighborhood where we operate? Now, social businesses are providing a very clear vehicle for companies as well to direct their social investment resources, instead of setting up a corporate social responsibility program and a budget that usually goes marginal within a traditional business model, try as a traditional business to set up social businesses. And then you won't need a corporate social responsibility program. Your social responsibility will be clear and it will be another business, but in a different format. It will be a social business. So I was talking about the master's degree. The master also talks about corporate social responsibility. We have a fourth topic, which is about social innovation. As you know, a very recent term, uh, a, a recent field of study, not older than 40, 42 years old. But one of my favorite examples of social innovation have been those led by Professor Junus around the world. You know, one of the main theories of social innovation, this, uh, um, Mr. Jeff Molden living in the UK and uh, the president of NESTA, the National Endowment for Science, Technology and Arts, he has provided the world with this model for social innovation, where you have something like an helix like this, and it says social innovation starts with a prompt, then you develop a proposal, then you prototype that proposal, then you sustain it, and then you achieve systemic change. Well, actually, I don't know many examples of social innovation that have been able to fulfill that model where they achieve systemic change. I only know feminism and I only know the microcredit and the revolution of social business that Professor Junus is helping us to lead now. All the other examples that I know of social innovation remain local, sometimes for a very good reason. They have to stay circumscribed and local. But over the years, Professor Junus has, and all his work and his initiatives and his agenda, the way in which he migrated from microfinance to social business, providing us this new horizon of action as well, has always been one of my favorite examples of social innovation. And finally, our fifth area of concentration is effective management of organizations, not just social businesses or social organizations, but initiatives and movements in general. So building upon the experience of this master's degree, we were identified by Junus Center in Bangladesh because they are very active. And as I say, they go looking for opportunities to embed this within universities, private universities, public universities. It doesn't matter, but Junus Center is very effective in identifying where can we set up another Junus Social Business Center. They identified us, they said, we see that you have this program. I think this will be a good place to set up the first center for social business in Colombia. So that, that is the origin of it, Didier, and I'm sorry it took a little bit long, but it was building upon the experience of a master's degree 
a master's degree that, by the way, nowadays is gaining a lot of popularity. It has always done very well. But today, two weeks ago, we started with 34 new students. 34, that is a lot. Only MBAs around the world get that number of students. And we have 34 new social business leaders, new agents wanting to prepare them about how to set up and how to develop a social business model. Because I honestly think that social business can go into any industry. It can go almost in any field of this society that surrounds us. Sorry. Th thanks a lot, Maya Isabel. Um, yes, what is really very striking, and you're right, and you mentioned the fact that everyone can act, uh, and you were mentioning the, the importance of the UNO Social Business Centers being a network trying to help and to spread all over the world and helping people who want to go in these dynamics uh, and saying, okay, anyone who want to, to, to be involved can, uh, can go to see what can be done. And I, I just would like to mention, you know, the, the free zero circles saying that it's possible for young people to involve and also uh, social business competitions that have been created in order to promote around the world some involvement of students uh, that want to, who want to, to change the world in, in initiative. So it's very, very important. Uh, and what in, in what you are saying, the, the idea saying that, okay, education is a very important part of the of the UNO centers generally because it's important to to provide methods and to help young people to involve in social business and to try to promote social innovation social business and become leaders in movements all, all around the world and, and so i think it's very important and i, I imagine also to to be connected with local communities and with classical companies what you were saying saying okay there is an issue to be connected with them and to help them in order to, to create projects and to have really very concrete approach, Finley. It is, uh, Professor Didier, at the Junus Center in Cali, we always talk about our three areas of work or our three branches. Foremost, first and foremost, obviously everything that has to do with education, because we are a university center, we are in a university context, but very importantly, education does not only apply to formal education programs. It's not just a master's degree in social innovation with a big component of social business. It's not just a form formal program, but also we are trying to outreach as much as possible with different formats and different opportunities to train people around these topics. It is very important that universities do not keep teaching and promoting this system and its premises that have us at the edge, you know, of, of our life as a species. It is important for universities to start embracing these new topics, to start hugging these new fields as well to influence their traditional approaches to economic and to build a society also with these topics. But it is very important as well for universities to move out of the classroom and to go and to, for university teachers to be in contact with the realities out there. Last year in 2021, we had a very, very difficult year. I will say one of the strongest and hardest years of our recent history, not just because we were in the middle of a pandemic and not just because the pandemic brought with it even more stark inequalities, but also because we went into a national strike. It was meant to be a one day demonstration. It was meant to be a one day strike against a particular tax reform. And what happened here left everyone completely taken aback. It went into almost six weeks of utter frustration, destruction, 
hostility from everywhere. We had civilians shooting at protesters. We had protesters putting their lives out there saying we have nothing to lose. We had resistance points where they kept cooking all these six weeks with the solidarity of people supporting this. We had police forces, military forces invading the city and only the sounds of our city and our landscape changed completely during those six weeks. And you know what we also came to realize during that period? That there is a very big disenfranchised group of young people that have no access to anything, no opportunities for education, for employment, for training. When I used to work in the UK, we used to talk a lot about the need, not in education, employment, nor training. In Colombia, we didn't even have that category to talk about young people. We came to realize this is not a strike of truck drivers as we used to have. This is not a teacher's strike. This is not a laborer's strike or a worker's strike. This is a young people's strike. So at the, before that strike, we were planning, we, we, for example, we got some funding to do a social business idea competition for young people. And we were visiting schools, formal, formal schools, public schools and private schools. And we were taking this message, trying to do engaging workshops. You know that 13, 14, 15 years old are not easy to seduce. They are always like this in the classroom. Or what are we going? They are only wanting to go out at 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. So we try to be very innovative as well and uh, very creative in the way that we took these workshops to them. But then the strike came and we said we cannot keep on focusing only on students and young people that are in education. We asked Professor Junus because in the Junus Center they get to know everything that we do and I said please do you think it is appropriate will you let us take this social business competition out of the schools, out of the classrooms, schools and university classrooms. Can we please take this to the resistance points? Can we please take this to the strike focal points that were full of young people? And it was particularly in those contexts that we promoted this competition. We made workshops, not the safest of them, I have to confess, it was a little bit risky from our part. We, were, we conducted those workshops, but we also took there the idea of social business. We created a kit, a small box that inside has everything you need to know to set up your own business. And with that excuse of we are distributing this kit, we managed to go and speak and try to gush as well what young people were thinking and what was common among all these points, focal points of resistance and of strike, what was common was the frustration, the hostility, the lack of hope, the disenchantment basically. So as I was saying, at, Center, at Juno Center for Social Innovation in Cali, education, but not just formal education, is one of our biggest first and foremost tasks as well. We also talk about research. You, Professor Didier, I would like to have a dossier, a portfolio of research like yours. Here, everything has to be written still. There is no clear information about what is the extent of social entrepreneurship, for example, or what is the size or the impact of the social economy, let alone what is, what, how many social businesses are there. And we have come to realize that there are more social businesses than we think there are and that are registered and part of the official charts. So these are research processes that need to be fostered, that need to be encouraged. All of our students of the master's degree are conducting rigorous research about these topics as well. For example, I have two students now, they have won a scholarship to do a master's degree, and both of them are conducting research on 
two community initiatives. One works with young people, one work with women that have been victims of the, our conflict, young people and victims of the conflict, women, and both of them are now writing their dissertations practical. They are action research dissertations where they are helping these community initiatives where they have belonged for a very long time to set up their own social business models. So research is another of our strands of work, but especially research that has the potential to change reality and to help promote more of these initiatives. And finally, we talk about action, education, research, and action. And as you probably know, Didier, when you are constantly doing these three, it's difficult to trace the boundaries. Where does this education finish and where is action? Or this action, this, this also has educational insights. So when we talk about action, we are talking about projects, real projects in the communities where we go outside the university campus to actually advise people to actually help organizations become more effective. And many, many organizations of the social economy here have the problem that they, all, they have around the world. Our sustainability, how are we going to become sustainable? Well, social business also provides a very good answer to that never ending question of how do we become sustainable? So I really see social business as a very, very perfect bullet. I, I hate the language of war, it's not a bullet, a perfect peace arrow, <laughs> a perfect peace arrow to go and transform the reality of private companies, the reality of the public sector as well, that sometimes wastes and wastes and invests and invests and nothing changes, and the reality of social organizations is struggling to become sustainable as well. Uh, and you see in, in what you are saying, it's very important to mention that, saying that, it, that there is a, a virtuous cycle, circle, saying that uh, you, you are involved, you are engaged uh, in the communities, trying to promote social business and to act. Doing that, your students are, are working with people, with communities, and try to act and make master theses that are useful to people. Uh, and so it's very important to, to observe that uh, each one is improving himself, is learning a lot of things, and is helping to change the things. And finally, the, the, the free circle saying we have education, we have action, uh, and, and making research is very useful and complete each other, enabling to create a, a, a dynamics. And so we, we can say that we are changing our mind. And also, I, I, in what you are saying, the idea that we, we we think with social business, we think differently about university, about the way we teach, because we are no more in an amphitheater saying the truth to students. We are working with them, we are working with communities, and we move outside the classroom, outside the amphitheater, in order to create things, to co-create things with people and with community. Uh, and so I think uh, this is very, so very important because when you, you were saying that you have, I think, 34 uh, students engaged in the master, uh, these 34 students will be engaged in their curriculum, but they will engage in communities, working with people, working with communities. And so I think that here you probably create a network, you are creating a dynamics, and perhaps also with your alumni. I don't know with the former promotions, if you are probably connected with them. And so here we are creating a network that disseminates everywhere and that can reinforce the impact perhaps. Absolutely, Didier. It's not just the 34 that have just started two weeks ago. It's also the nearly 60 people that we have registered in different years of the master's degree and, and also the alumni. Absolutely. You have mentioned a, a word. We are creating an ecosystem of people and of practitioners that speak this language of social inclusion through social businesses as well. Uh, universities continue to teach businesses, and I believe businesses are a very powerful force 
for transformations of all sorts of kinds, but just in the way that a business can appear here where nothing else exists and immediately start generating um, progress and economic programs and start generating richness as well. Social business has in itself the potential to come here where there was nothing to create impact and to create social inclusion and to promote empathy. Mm. Um, it, it is very important, Didier, that you say, yeah, all these students that are forming an ecosystem because we are talking about a country that has been hit by war for more than 60 years. It's an internal conflict, but an internal conflict that at certain point has taken our spirit, you know? We are called, there is a, a book published recently, Colombia, the, the country of the sad emotions. We are a country that has been sad for 60 years. Cali, for example, only because of what happened last year, went from being the third city in terms of social progress in this country to being the eighth city in terms of social progress. The, the extent of the destruction and of the division within our own citizens was something that we have never experienced before. And not just Cali, but the whole country is a country characterized by division, a country that is demonstrating it's quite unable to put themselves, ourselves in the shoes of someone else. A country that actually in 2016, when they opened a referendum to see whether people were validating the peace process or not, and the peace agreements that had already been signed and taken a lot of effort, a country where 51% of the voting population in October 2016 said, no, we don't want a peace process. So what we see here is a very clear empathy deficit that we have as a country, as a city, as a species, you know, an empathy deficit that keeps stopping social progress and that keeps posing a barrier to transformation and to create peaceful societies. Peace cannot emerge in a context of poverty. That lesson was given to us by Professor Junos. When he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, it was a recognition to his effort for building peace through in financial inclusion. But peace cannot also grow in a context of disenchantment and in a, with the levels of empathy deficit that we have. So we need to take these topics out. We need to teach this. We need to inspire people. We need to encourage people to think like social business leaders. We need to make possible for our students to do action research that allows them to set up their own social business. We need to also support so our students and alumni become advisors themselves and promoters themselves of this social business. Because honestly, I don't see many other exits or way, ways out of this country and, and of this situation in which we are. The peace agreements are very blurry six years down the line. The peace processes that were taking place, especially in the isolated regions of Colombia, are very tainted now by other forces, negative and dark forces as well. We still are a city characterized by salsa, by happiness, by the mixture of the people, but we are still the city also of drug cartels, of incredible levels of violence for not being in a civil war. And we still are a city where there's a lot of 
disenfranchised young people, young people wanting to belong, young people wanting to contribute and not finding nice ways to channel their talent. So it is very, very important that we, as teachers, as promoters, as advisors, as consultants, take this mission of creating a different world, creating a different economic system, dreaming and making it possible to create a world with zero unemployment, with zero poverty, and with zero carbon emissions. It is possible, but it is possible only through the vehicle of social business. I don't see many other ways to get there. Yeah. Yes, it's really, you're, you're right, saying that Finley's social business is really a way to change our philosophy uh, and to say that each one, each of us can mobilize. Uh, you know, it's like, the, you know, the, the colibri, hummingbird, saying that exactly. each one has to act at its level and trying to fight against violence in, in the case, against poverty, against unemployment. And that thanks to the, the collective mobilization, it's it gives keys in order to, to improve situation, Finley, and to help people to, to act and to create their activity and, and to go out of poverty and having less impact on the uh, environment and so on. And, and so perhaps uh, uh, just because I think you, you really provide a very good and very stimulating presentation of of this importance of social business and the way it helps to change the, the world and the Colombia uh, in this specific and very difficult context of violence, of poverty, and, and so on. And in your opinion now, uh, what is going on? What will be the next step for you and for the... Uh, do you think you mentioned at the beginning that now there is a lot of much more scholars in Colombia are involving in social business? Do you think do you have, we have some actions to, to to go ahead and to go beyond what has already been done. Thank you, Prof Professor Didier. I think um, one way of answering will be what will be the future for me and for our Juno Center. But if you ask me in a broader sense, what will be the future of social business, for example? Um, I, reporter David Bornstein has made a nice analogy using the web language saying, um, social entrepreneurship 1.0, social entrepreneurship 2.0, and trying to describe the different uh, phases that we have gone through. I will say, copying him, social business 1.0 were the past 15 years where the concept was promoted widely. We have four books written by our boss, by Professor Junus, explaining very carefully what is social business? So social business 1.0 was the last 15 years. There's a new player in this field of improving people's lives. We then move to a social business 2.0 where we are actually supporting businesses on the ground, developing different social business. At the Juno Center now, we are supporting the creation of social business within a private construction company. We are supporting social businesses in the creative and cultural industries. Some of them working with music, with design, with theater. We are supporting social businesses in the health sector as well, just to name a few. So I think this social business 2.0 has been actually doing it on the ground and what will be the future what is going to be social business 3.0 4.0 and 5.0 everyone preferring to buy and to consume from social businesses people mm. are tired people are worried as well young people are particularly critical my daughter does not allow me to buy fast fashion anymore I, have, I haven't bought any fast fashion in the last five years and my daughter is only 18 years old. And since she was 13, she prohibited to me to buy fast fashion. So I think the future of social business is social business is going to be the preferred option of economic students, of business administration students. Social business has to be 
widely recognized, widely promoted, widely encouraged. It has to be financially supported. It has to be backed up by public policies as well and by programs of the public sector that come to strengthen and to support the development of more social business. We have, to do, we have been doing a very important task, but we need to be more active, we need to be louder, and we need to do this faster as well, Didier, because the problems keep growing like this, and solutions yeah. go very timid behind. We need more problem solvers. We need to make it fashionable for young people to ask each other, what problem are you trying to solve? And not just, what are you studying? That's great. Uh, and I, I think finally, finally, the, the, the point is to say that we really need to be much, much more involved. And it's very important to have persons like you and like Professor Muhammad Yunus who are inspiring people uh, and that help young generation to go and to be involved in free zero cycle circles and other initiatives in order to, to act. Uh, and so I think that really it's a good way to say, okay, come back to the to the network and don't hesitate to, to engage and to involve in you know, social business centers locally, but also worldwide in, in the DACA, DACA center of the network, because it's very important to be able to, and to think that Finland Finally, finally, with, with uh, the network of you know, Social Business Center, we, we really have a global connection and really the idea that it is possible to help and to give, you were mentioning, to give kits, to give uh, elements for people to be able to act by themselves. And it's important to think about that. We are providing resources to help people to act. Uh, and so this will be also very, very important. So I, I think that uh, if I remember well, I, I think that Zinat was saying that we, we need to, I don't know if we have much more time, but I think that she oh, will no. probably want to <laughs> conclude because we were discussing uh, and um, so uh, I, I think that there is a lot of, really a great initiatives to, to do. Uh, and really it was very impressive to this discovering what you are doing in Cali and the way you are helping by your actions to really be connected in the, in the climate of violence, of difficulties, helping people and helping things to change and to go to a more peaceful uh, society. And it's very, very important in my opinion. So, Thank you very if much, you... Professor Didier. Thank you very much. I didn't realize that our time has come out, <laughs> actually. I, I can talk for four hours, for four years. But I, there's only one last thing that I would like to say. We are a community of practice. I think the people that are here listening to us are part of this same community of practice. You can be in a very prestigious university like the Sorbonne in Paris, or in a new emerging university like there are many around the world. And it is important that you use our experience as well. We have as a community, a sense and a duty to go and help other universities as well. So I'm here to support anyone in Colombia, in Latin America, in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, whatever they want to help them pave this way to set up your own social business center. Yeah, and so, yes, this message saying, don't remain alone with your doubts and your, your questions and, and think that it is possible to, to involve in a movement and to ask people in the community to, to help and to, to have possibilities to develop your project. Because we, we are, it's important to share with each other in the community in order to, yes, to help people to act and to create a better, a better future, I will say with three zeros. So thanks a lot, Maria Isabel, and thanks a lot to each of you who attend to this, company, to this seminar. And really don't hesitate to contact us uh, in ECC, in uh, the UNO Social Business Center or in Sorbonne. It will be with pleasure that we will answer to, to you. Uh, so don't really, don't hesitate. and we keep in contact. So thanks a lot for each of you. And we, we look forward to hearing from you. Zinat, if you want to conclude, perhaps. 
Thank you very much. A round of applause for both our moderator and speaker. Uh, thank you very much. This has been a really great conversation, especially to hear about Maria's activities. And um, uh, I appreciate how you highlight the need for YSBCs and the activities of YSBCs. Um, so with that, um, I see there's many people commenting on, um, uh, on the activities you have done in uh, Colombia, Maria. And perhaps um, uh, if anyone has a question, on the activities in Colombia or about our YSBC, you can email us at ysbc at unocenter.org. My colleagues will put the email address. Anyone interested to know about our YSBC activities, not only in Colombia, but all over the world, uh, please email us and also keep an eye on our social media um, at UNOCenter Facebook page and UNO Social Business Center YSBC Facebook page. After this um. Uh, session, we will be uploading this recording on our social media, along with maybe a summary of some of the activities that Maria Isabel is doing in Colombia, like the Parche Nova competition. Um, we have had two brilliant uh, scholarship students who have been working with Maria on the social business activities. So I also encourage other young people who are in universities and schools to connect, um, to talk to your academics, to talk to your professors about social business. If you don't have a YSBC at your university, um, you may wish to have one or even talk about social business, develop a social business course. Uh, there's some university who already have a social business course and you may look at their course outline and have a similar one, a short course, anything. So just to get the conversation started, of course, you know, center is what helps to get the conversation started and uh, connect you to others who are doing it. So thank you very, very much again to Maria and Professor Didier for this conversation uh, we appreciate your time and effort thank you very much thank and you thank you Zina, <laughs> for the great work and thank you professor june thank, thank you, you very Maya much. Isabel, Zinat, and all the attendants it was great to be with you thanks a lot <laughs> thank you now i kindly request the tech team to play some slides uh, this will be about our upcoming lectures about our social business day and also about a social business competition and social fiction competition now the social business day is coming up in june and uh, the social fiction competition and the social uh, business design competition are are happening at the moment. The deadline is end of March. So please do check out our social media for more information on these um, uh, competition. Excellent opportunity for you to showcase your talent. So please um, do check them out. And of course, always you are free to email us if you have any questions. So please uh, watch our slides. Until then, we will see you again for our next lecture. Thank you very much.
Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.